So after four years with Goldmark, Aaron headed for France. The newer music seemed to be coming from Paris. Have you seen Ravel? Were the hottest things around in those days. And especially the fact that Igor Stravinsky was alive and living and working in Paris. That was a big draw. The French decided to um, establish a music school for American students, a summer music school in the palace of Fontainebleau. When I learned about that, of course, I, I jumped at the idea since it would, meant that I, might, I would spend my first two months in Europe with a bunch of fellow Americans. At the end of the two month school, they decided to give a public concert in Paris. I believe I played two early piano pieces, one of Passacaglia, and the other was a piano piece called The Cat and the Mouse. After the concert in the green room, to my great surprise and pleasure, Monsieur Durand of the famous uh, French publishers, Durand and Company, came up to me and said, is that work of yours published? I said, no. He said, well, come and see me in my office, and uh, perhaps we'd like to publish it. So I went to see him in his office, and he said, yes, definitely, we would like to publish it. Here's a check for so many francs. It was about the equivalent of 25 or at most $50. I can't remember exactly. Here's a check, and just sign here. So I, was, I would have given him the piece for nothing. Uh, I was so delighted to be published, especially by Debussy and Ravel's publisher. So I signed a piece of paper, and by golly, I sold the whole complete rights forever for about the equivalent of $50. Uh, my friend Harold Krumman says it's the only business mistake I ever made. <laughs> Paris was the place to be in the 20s, so they were all there. Joyce, Hemingway, Fitzgerald, the writers as well as the composers and the painters could be seen in the cafes and bookstores. Although too young and green to be part of the Paris in the 20s set, Copeland and his cousin Harold Kluhrman, who would become the distinguished theater director, suddenly found themselves in this extraordinary center. While at Fontainebleau, Aaron had met the young woman who would become his teacher. Fellow students started to talk to me about a, a teacher of harmony called Nadia Boulanger, and urging me to visit her class. And I said, no, I'm not visiting any harmony classes. I've had three years of harmony. Don't want to hear anything more about harmony. They said, no, no, just go and see the way she does it. So I was very taken with her. And very gradually, I began to think I would like to study with Nadia Boulanger. But I hesitated, because I couldn't think in the whole history of music of any well-known, famous composer would ever studied with a woman teacher. Nadia Boulanger would become the single most important composition teacher of the century. Her influence was enormous as generation after generation of young musicians flocked to her studio to study with this exceptional woman. She was really a remarkable personality and an extraordinary musician. She knew everything about music you would want to know. The oldest music, the newest music, a studio was not just a place where we studied with her. It was a kind of a musical center of Paris. She had her Wednesday afternoon classes for her students. And after the class was over, all the musical great of Paris came for tea. I mean, I met Stravinsky there, and I met Poulenc and Mio, all the younger composers. I even shook hands with Saint-Saëns in that place. She really launched me on my way. I mean, when it was announced in the French papers that Serge Kusevitsky, a Russian conductor living in Paris, was named the new head of the Boston Symphony, she said, we must go and visit him. At the end of our visit, he astonished me by saying, you, pointing to me, will write a symphony for organ and orchestra and she, Mademoiselle Boulanger, will come and play the organ part as soloist with the orchestra. 
Well, when we left his apartment, I said to Nadja, you really think I can do it? You know, I had never heard a note of my own orchestration. I had never written a piece that lasted half an hour without pause. And she sort of shook her finger at me and said, you can do it. When Nadja Boulanger said, you can do it, that was the end of the discussion. <laughs> you can do it.